Yeah, you can even smell it. Yeah. Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession. This week I'm joined by the brand new Cupra Leon and as many of you may know I've got a Seat Leon Cupra Mark II so it seems natural to compare the two cars. Of course though I can't drive two cars at once. Thankfully this Cupra Leon has an optional extra which is in the boot. I'll show you it. I have an optional pocket rockets hey there we go oh i'm, I'm needed now am i quite a cheap option oh jesus now chris has clambered his way out of the boot it i've is, escaped <laughs> it is time to get cracking now of course this is my car so i'm defending the honor of the old school whilst chris is defending the honor yeah. of the new school so chris what engine do you have yes so i have the two liter EA AAA engine. It's actually a relic because this has been around for a while, but that's for good reason because it is a cracking engine. This produces 300 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Ah, well, this is where things get a bit interesting because I've also got a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. Now, when this car was original, it would have offered 240 horsepower along with 300 newton meters of torque, but this car has been fettled. So yes, I now have- you're a cheater. I now have <laughs> 326 horsepower, more than you, and yeah. 456 newton meters, which again, oh yeah, oh, yeah that's also oh, more yeah, than yeah, you. Okay. That is ridiculous. Yeah. So it's now time to experience the new Cupra Leon. And uh, of course we glossed over the uh, engine very briefly, but let's talk about it inside the car. And for me, I love the EA AAA engine. I think it's a awesome bit of just invention, as you could say. It's a, a great definition to represent the four cylinder petrol engine, which Unfortunately, it's going to come to its demise at some point in the near future. But until then, Volkswagen Automotive Group, or however you want to call it, VAG, uh, constantly, I wouldn't say developing the engine, but yeah, utilising it still to this day. And uh, yeah, I've got no gripes with that. Usually, when you have a new car, you want something different. You want it to be different from the last. But yeah, I can't say that for this. I really do like it, I really do. And the power delivery is just insane. I mean, I've only had the pleasure of driving this for a very short time, of course, getting here to where we're filming. And uh, yeah, the power is still unexpected, even though I've driven this platform so many times now. And uh, yeah, it's a, a sure way of losing your license if you're not, too if you're, you're not careful enough. Yeah, you're definitely gonna upset a police officer or two. But um, yeah, we're just doing some casual driving at the minute because summer's gone. Um, believe it or not, we're here in September and we had sunshine, which is crazy. But today it's decided to uh, yeah scupper us. So yeah, the weather is not on our side. But nevertheless, this car you can drive comfortably every day. It's great. Um, even though I have actually got it in Cooper mode, which is the sportiest of settings. It dampens the suspension, of course makes the steering heavier, which is definitely a must because 
in the normal mode, it's terrible. It really is. You do really feel a noticeable difference when you change it from normal to Cupra. Now one thing the Cooper Leon hasn't got that I have is a six speed manual. So I've got three pedals at my feet and a gear lever to my left hand side. Now as a stock item, the gear change is, I'd say on the long side, it's, it's slick enough, but just long. Thankfully, thanks to Forge Motorsport, I have a short shifter and it really elevates the driving experience. The gear change is snappier, it's faster, and it just makes the car a bit more engaging and more fun. The Ride of Leo, it isn't too bad considering the type of car this is, and to be fair, believe it or not, with the iBark lowering springs, the ride is better compared to stock. You may see me jiggling about a little bit in my seat, but for the most part, the ride is fine. Some may find it a bit busy for everyday use and a Golf GTI Mark V would be uh, a better companion for everyday use, but this is just more exciting. Speaking of the seats, they are fantastic. They're set pretty low and they hold you in the right places. Also, they look fantastic. Now I'm currently in manual mode at the minute, which is of course an option in this car. It has a seven speed dual clutch gearbox which to be fair is very slick you wouldn't even know it's changing gears unfortunately however in most of these new uh, cars especially in the Volkswagen automotive group they tend to uh, take over so it's giving you the option to have a manual facility with your semi-automatic gearbox but then when it doesn't like you doing something like holding a gear too long it will change itself and I'm like well you either give me the option or you don't and uh, sort of really spoils what you want from it. Of course, Aaron, in his 14-year-old Cupra, has a manual gearbox, and for you hardcore fans, you love that. You love that fact. It's saving the manuals. But in this, you can un only, unfortunately, get it in an automatic, or semi-automatic in this case. The power delivery in Leo is intoxicating. It's very addictive. I just love the noises it makes, particularly from that Revo induction kit. Oh. I've just noted, good sir, that you've uh, been fettling some more with uh, the back of your car. I've noticed that you've got um, a different exhaust. Would you like to explain this, sir? Indeed I would. So I've got a Cobra Catback non-resonated exhaust and yes, it sounds fruity. Yes, it does indeed. Um, but I've uh, got another thing that I don't like about this car is the fact that they've faked the exhaust tips. <gasps> yes, they have faked the exhaust tips, guys. See, my tip is very much real. Make of that what you will. It's very dirty too. Well, it's seen plenty of action, giggity. Car to cornering, Leo does it pretty well. I'm pretty sure by now I've mentioned the lowering springs, which not only make the car look cooler, uh, it lowers the ride height, but it does make the car flatter in the corners. The brakes perform well, although they are on the over-assisted side, which isn't a bad thing. I'd rather the brakes be a bit too strong than a bit too weak. But when you first drive this car, you do have to get used to how the brakes feel because they do feel a little bit, not unnatural, just different. The steering in the corners is okay. I would want it to be a bit more direct to have a bit more feedback because sometimes you turn into a corner, then all of a sudden you realize you need more lock to get around, which isn't a major issue, but it is a little bit of an annoyance however you do get used to it over time now uk roads for me in my experience are getting worse and worse as the day goes on and it's a good thing to talk about suspension now 
Ride comfort is a subjective topic. It's got individual preference, I suppose. Uh, for me, I've pretty much driven firm cars pretty much all my life. Um, of course, I own a Mark 7.5 or Mark 7.5 ST180, and that pretty much is up there when it comes to the firmest ride known to man. I would say falling down or getting pushed down a flight of stairs is more comfortable than the ride in that thing. Of course, I will be addressing that at some point with some coilovers. But in this, you get DCC, which is dynamic chassis control, which allows you to dampen uh, the suspension, depending on the mo mode you're in. Now, of course, as I said earlier, I'm in Cupra mode, and I actually have to say, the ride is impressive. Um, I thought it would be a lot firmer than this, and yeah, positive feedback, it's really good. So mate, of course we've been uh, graced with this uh, glorious weather. Um, what's your car like in the dry in comparison to the wet? I can imagine that it spins up for days and you have to modulate the pedal quite a bit. But in the dry, um, from my experience, it, it handles it pretty well. Yeah, in the dry, it is pretty good. Um, in the wet, to be, actually to be fair, it's not been as bad today as I thought it would be, which is just as well because I think I'm getting to the point where I need an arc, not a car. Well, the shape of your car's quite boat-like, I'd suppose, in comparison to mine. So I didn't catch that. Don't worry, mate, I was just taking the mic out of your car. I don't think you want to hear it again. Mate, wait till you get in the driver's seat and you'll be blown away. So as you know, I've already found some things that I don't quite agree with or I just feel that they could have done better and I found another and that's the sound considering that the type of car this is a performance car a car that yes costs a lot of money the sound um, it's very mute of course these days um, cars have got all sorts of filters on the exhaust to mute that even more but I just feel it's missing some drama um, like the Cooper Fermenter, which I'm going to keep bringing up because that uses the same, well, a similar platform. Yes, it is a bigger car and it is an SUV. Um, it just had lots of uh, drama, lots of noises, and uh, yeah, it just stimulated your senses. But in this, yes, okay, it has some sounds which are mostly pumped into the cabin, again, like most cars these days. But yeah, they're just, I don't feel the same as I did in the Cupra uh, Fermenter. This car is epic, it really is. And uh, very impressed, it's a great package. And I would say the interior is lovely and it's just a nice place to be. And uh, living with this car every day, I have no complaints, definitely don't. And the things that I find annoying, I will soon put that to the back of my head and forget all about it. It really is an awesome package. But I think it's now time for me to uh, jump back 14 years and go and have a little play in Leo. That sounds quite wrong. Now straight away, the steering and the sound is a lot better. <laughs> so now Aaron's put an induction kit on this from Revo and uh, I have to say <laughs> oh, this is awesome oh my god it's even more dramatic in the wet because yeah it just spins up for days <laughs> oh this is wicked thank you Aaron so much for letting me drive this again Oh, just makes me even more excited to uh, yearn more power out of my ST. So, of course, in this car, I've lost my manual gearbox. No, I've got the seven speed DSG, but to be fair, it does work pretty well. The changes are slick, sharp. One thing I will say is that when you kick down on the accelerator, sometimes you have to wait a few moments and then oh, all of a sudden you get the power. Now, one thing we haven't really touched upon yet, Chris and I, is the looks and the styling. 
Now, when I first got Leo, I wasn't a big fan of the looks. In fact, I thought it was a bit ugly. But the more I've lived with the Mark II Land Cooper, the better it looks. And I think it's a car that looks so much better in motion. Just seeing it in my rear view mirror, it looks really good, actually. Anyway, focus on the road, Aaron. The brand new Cupra Leon, I think, is a stunning car. And I would argue it is the best looking car in its class. Like my Mark II, the seats hold you in place well. And the actual design of the seats is quite similar. A one-piece unit with an integrated headrest with a little hole in the middle. Now, of course, people will argue that there's just too much power in this, especially in weather like this. But, yeah, even in a 200-horsepower car, in weather like this, it's going to spin up. Just It's, it's physics. It's, you've got power to the front wheels, and it's doing all the work at the front. But if you're clever and got some common sense you don't just go gung-ho on the pedal you've got to modulate it and it actually makes it very enjoyable you can almost just can you you're almost controlling how much you're giving and sort of stopping the wheel spin uh, being 10 steps ahead of it but that induction and the torque is absolutely unreal all the way through it just doesn't run out of course power runs out eventually through the rev range but in the driver's seat it just feels like it goes on and on and on you don't need to change down a gear to find the power again it's there for you for each gear now of course this is a 14 year old car and uh it isn't new anymore and you can feel that with the steering even though i said yeah it definitely uh it is better it feels more weighted anyway um, yeah, you can feel it's uh, a little bit tired. It's not broken, but you can feel the oldness seeping out of it. Yeah, you can even smell it. Yeah. But um, no, it is. I'll, I'll let him off because it is an older car. But um, yeah, you don't have all these uh, fancy trickery of uh, driving modes in this. You just get one mode. Absolute carnage. Like this. Now the power delivery in this car, as you would expect, because this is standard and my car is mapped by AMD tuning, in case you're wondering. This car is still pretty powerful and because of the 7 speed DSG, you do find sometimes you look down at the speedo and you think, oh, oh dear, I've picked up quite a bit of speed. This car is pretty, well this car is very potent, but I'd say the power in this is a bit more refined. So for example, we'll just give it the beans. As much as I hate to say it, this car does feel faster. It seems to pick up pace quicker, but I suppose it would do because it's got the seven speed DSG. As much as I love a manual gearbox, there's no denying the seven speed DSG just makes it quicker. It's just no arguing. The ride. That's one thing I really want to cover. The ride in the Cupra Leon is phenomenal. This, as standard on the VZ2, which is what this trim level is, as standard, I've got the DCC, which is the dynamic chassis control. Put simply, this car has got adaptive dampers, and even in Cupra mode, which I'm in now, the ride is taut, but it's still more compliant compared to Leo. However, if you want to dial things down, I do of course have a choice of driving modes, which you don't get in Leo, of course. So if I go to a bit of a faff in this, so if I put it into comfort, all of a sudden, the Cooper Leon becomes docile, compliant, and it almost feels like I'm driving a standard Seat Leon. Now I spoke about the ride in the new Cooper, and I was very impressed. And uh, I'm actually very impressed with this. Now, this is actually on lowering springs. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, but I think he's eye backs. Let's ask him. Sorry, mate. Just need to uh, confirm something. Uh, save you a job in the editing suite. Um, you're running eye back lowering springs on this, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. I shall leave you to it. Yeah, so um, this is running lowering springs 
which again I run in my ST180 and however it's terrible in mine in this it's actually very nice and this road is got holes everywhere um, and the rain doesn't help but it really does ride nicely um, I can only imagine what it'd be like on a uh, coilo is all change down a gear and give it some beans <laughs> this thing is crazy now this car is fantastic in the corners the brakes aren't as strong but they do feel a bit more natural in regards to the progressiveness the handling is sharp it's more direct I would argue it's got a bit more feedback as well which is a bit weird to say because you would expect the older vehicle to give you more feedback and communication but I need to be honest that's why I'm here and this does feel better in the corners when it comes to the steering. Oh. Picking up speed in this car is effortless. A bit too much so. As, as much as it pains me to say it, a few times I have left Chris and Leo trailing. Chris is probably struggling to put the power down, that's why. <laughs> and that was in comfort mode just realised I've still got it in comfort we don't want that do we now going back to the adaptive dampers because this has the DCC when you put the uh, car into in individual mode so I've got comfort, sport, coupe and individual driving modes in case I haven't mentioned that when you go into individual you've got get this 16 settings for the ride comfort 16 that's just spoiled for choice who needs 16 settings oh should i have on setting 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 or 9 ah i can't decide when you jump out of the new car the new cooper Leon, and you get into this you sort of question why would you go and buy a new car why because this does pretty much everything that does okay it's a lot more revised you've got an infotainment system you can do android auto or apple carplay you've got climate control um it looks better inside yes okay this has shown its age but apart from that really it does everything that the new cooper Leon can do so it begs the question why would you go and spend over thirty-five thousand pounds on the car when you could get one for less than 10,000. Hmm, yeah, that's an interesting question. One annoying thing about the DSG is that even when you put it into manual and use the flappy paddles, watch this. It still changes up for you, so you can't rev the car out like you can do in Leo, Leo because of course he is a manual. So even when you have it in manual mode, it isn't really manual. I'm, it's still changing up for me and I find that annoying no 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 the whole the whole idea of manual is it's manual don't start intervening when you want to just let me have control over the gearbox now before I hand back the keys to uh, Aaron um, I don't actually want to I really do like this car it's a great choice Aaron I'm very happy that you uh, found this car because you weren't keen at the start and uh I will tell you now, he wasn't keen on it. I think he was more not keen on the looks. But for me, the looks, are, I like the looks. It's definitely uh, something you don't see anymore. Let's put it that way. But um, yeah, my final thoughts. This thing is an absolute joy to drive. Not only is it absolutely ridiculous in power and just the feel of it and the power delivery, it actually is something you can still live with every day. Okay. If you don't like the noise, you can take out the induction kit and get something maybe a little bit more mute. Um, and of course, if you want to be a little bit more civilized in the exhaust department, again, you, there's lots of stuff on the aftermarket, um, lots of stuff in, in the aftermarket that you can buy that will be not as loud. It's not actually that loud, to be fair. You sort of get used to it. But yeah, it's just a great all day, every day package, just like the new Cooper Leon. Um, and I know some of you will go mm, yeah, well it's, you're doing a twin test on something that A you can't buy anymore and 
yeah, it makes more sense in the price department. But it's great to see that it has all the DNA from the new car shares DNA from this car. It still does everything pretty much the same. And uh, yeah, some will argue, well, it's not really changed, is it? But yeah, it has. So that was a bit of a blast, despite the awful weather. Yeah. So your thoughts, because the thing is, as much as the brand new Cooper Lown is a good car, and I would argue it is the nicer car to live with day to day, yeah. I'm biased. So I'm, I'm gonna have to side with, with the Leo. So really, it's more about your thoughts than, than anything. Yeah, well, time you edit this, you'll hear my thoughts, but yeah, I'll, I'll um, indulge you again. Yes. Um, yeah, no, you are right, the Cooper is, well, the, the, the new Cooper Leon yeah. is an all round package. It does everything that you want it to, yeah. and it does it. Yeah, with little e with with ease to be fair. Yeah, your car does pretty much everything that the new one does, and it's crazy to think that they're 14 years apart, but they do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's more refined inside, and yeah, you've got creature comforts that you don't more, have in your car. It's more practical as well. It's got more space yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, but only a bigger a, car. It's, it's not like it's a huge amount of difference. No, it's, it's still fairly competitive when you when you put them together. But um, yeah, mate. Honestly, I would I would have your car over it. There we go. So there we have it guys, <laughs> the old school has beaten yeah. the new school. Of course, a massive thank you yeah, no, for thank Chris you for, for joining me. me. A massive thank you for uh, to Cooper UK for loaning me the brand new Cooper Leon for a week. And of course, a massive thank you for you guys watching this video. Yes, thank you. Don't forget again, to guys. check out Chris's channel yeah. or pop the details in the uh, video description. But yes, if you have enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, be sure to keep up the car obsession. I'll send yeah. uh, my invoice in the post once again. Oh mate. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Majority shareholder and all. Yeah, yeah well, so 5p coming your way. Yeah, yep, cool. Thanks, well done, mate. mate. Goodbye.